Hello, Jess the Human here and uh, obviously Jess the Little Dog. Today is the first day that we've got builders on site for our renovation. Um, so this is a bit of a scary day for Jess, so I'm not going to ask too much of her. She'll be here in the background, but um, you know, she's not going to be up and about doing stuff. So I'll try and use some nice B-rolls so you can see her just doing things, having fun, but bear with her, she's an anxious little sausage. So. Another Q&A today, and I've asked you your questions about living with a Whippet. This is all stuff from my experiences of living with Jess. It's not everyone's experiences. Everyone doesn't have the same experiences, so just bear that in mind. Are Whippets high energy? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so um, they sort of have typically bursts of energy, but like generally speaking, they're quite lethargic dogs. So you'll find that at home, your Whippet sleeps a lot, snuggles a lot, just likes a cuddle and cuddle and a snooze on the sofa. Um, but when you're out and about, or at certain points in the day maybe, they have sort of these bursts of energy. People call it zoomies, where they get kind of like very excited and excitable, and they might just want to play or run or chase something. So this do like doesn't happen so much with us, like just doesn't sort of get spontaneous moments of excitement really. Um, but like when we hang out with other people and their dogs, there might just be a moment where they leap off the sofa and suddenly they're, you know, full of excitement, skidding around. Anyway, that's what you're dealing with. Like most of the time, total couch potato. And then occasional bursts of wackiness. So the next question is, how much exercise does Jess enjoy slash need? And do you have a set routine for exercise? Um, so first of all, how much does she need? It really varies from dog to dog. Jess is seven, so she's like getting on a bit. So, you know, we're not taking her for like huge long hikes every day. Um, and it really varies how much exercise she gets. So, you know, there are days where we we'll take her so I would say most days she gets like between half an hour and an hour in the park, off lead, sniffing around. Yeah, so like most days, maybe between half an hour and an hour at the park. It's like a typical walk that we'll do with her. Um, but then, you know, we take her everywhere with us. So she might also get on a day with a half hour walk in the park. She might also get two walks into town to get a Tesco in the pub or something. But we do try and give her a bit of off lead time as much as we can. Um, then at the weekends, we go for longer walks or we go and meet up with other people with whippets and she gets to run around with other dogs. And that's a bit more exercise because they kind of run together like as a pack um, really, really fast. So she really enjoys that. But also, you know, if we wanted to go for a really long walk one day, we would take Jess with us. She could do a full day's walking kind of thing. It's just that that's not something that is required. And do we have a set routine? No, we don't. We've gone through phases where like we'll try and walk her at the same time every day. You know, phases where we'll get up in the morning and we'll go for a walk all three of us together or where we'll walk her on a lunch break. But um, our lives have been quite like disjointed since the start of the pandemic and we haven't really established a routine. Maybe once all the building work's done and our house is finished and everything, that'll be the kind of time where we settle into something. But for now, we just do what works for us when it works for us. And it seems to be fine. How many cuddles are required a day? The answer to this is lots, loads. <laughs> They're really, really cuddly animals. Yeah, just as at her most cuddly, like when we wake up in the morning, she wants to do a lot of cuddling then. Then we get up and go about our days, but she'll come and find you in the middle of the day and want a little snuggle. Um, she gets very, very cuddly if like one of us goes out and comes home or yeah, when we're in front of the telly in the evenings, when we're all sitting on the same level, like on a sofa or on a bed or whatever, that's when she's like, okay, prime cuddle time. And you know she wants to cuddle because she'll like roll over onto her bag and put her arm in the air and show you a bit of her tummy and that's how you know that she means business. It's belly rub time. How's your recall? And do your humans worry about you running off or running away? I would say, yes, we worry about it. Um, I try and take treats with her whenever we go on a walk. I don't always remember. Um, and it's just sort of constant recall training that I do with her. Um, so, you know, if we spend half an hour in the park, I'll try and call her back to me 10 times and reward her with a treat. Um, but her recall is patchy and I definitely wouldn't have confidence that I could recall her off like a squirrel or something. She does have a strong prey drive, she has chased a deer before that came out of nowhere um, and she does chase squirrels so there are certain bits of our walks where we know that there are going to be more 
like squirrels than normal and will either pop her on the lead or just keep a closer eye on her um, or make sure she's walking to heel. But I would say with sight hounds, um, I don't know, you might find people who say that their dogs have got 100% recall, but um, I would not say that about ours for sure. Okay, next question. What are your favourite places to go together? We love going to the woods together, we love going to the park together. We love going to the drive through together. Jess gets really excited about the drive through She sits in the back and waits very patiently and hopes for a bit of grub. But our number one favourite place to go together is the beach. Um, Jess absolutely loves the beach. She just loves being able to run in one direction and there's nothing in her way. Um, as soon as she sees the sand, she gets so excited. It's just like, it's her favourite place. And we love it as well because like, when do you get to see her looking so free and happy? Um, it's really special and we just want her to be happy more than anything else in the world so um, yeah we try and get to the beach whenever we can but failing that the drive through Are all whippets as worried as you? This is referring to Jess the dog um, and the answer is no. <laughs> People do say that they're a slightly anxious or slightly neurotic breed um, and that might well be true that their anxiety levels are a bit higher than in other breeds of dog and I certainly get lots of people writing to me saying that they recognise Jess's anxiety in their own dogs. Um, but Jess, um, we're her third home. Um, we rehomed her from someone who couldn't look after her anymore and he rehomed her from someone who was not looking after her. So um, she hasn't had a happy life. She's had a lot of disruption and upheaval. And a result of that is that, that she's a very anxious little soul. But I'd say that that's as much to do with her past and her treatment as it is to do with her breed. What is your experience with leaving a whip at home alone? No problem or existential doggy crisis? <laughs> this is a really good question. This really is just our experience. And our experience is that we do not leave Jess home alone and we never have. It's just too anxiety inducing for her. We really like to be able to do it. And we've worked a couple of times with some really good dog behaviorists who've helped her, who've helped us sort of put down the groundwork to be able to leave her home alone. But we've had Jess for, since the end of 2018. So we'd only had her for just over a year when the, or like 18 months when the pandemic started. So by then we'd done some training to try and start leaving her at home on her own. But then we were sort of uprooted, we left London, and we moved in with my family and for a year we, didn't really have opportunities to leave her at home on her own because we weren't going out and we were in and out of lockdowns. So that wasn't really a great training opportunity. We did a bit of training over that time, but it was very difficult. And then now we've moved into our new house in a new area. Um, we're going undergoing renovations and stuff and the house just hasn't been a space where we can safely leave her at home on her own. So I'm really hoping that one day with some training and stuff in place and as she becomes more settled and we stop moving around that we'll be able to, um, that she'll have that level of confidence in her environment that it'll be easier to start training her to be left on her own. Fingers crossed. Pray for us guys because we haven't been to the cinema in like three years. How do you start pub training, any tips for beginners. This is probably a reference to our um, other recent video where we visited um, three pubs in a day with Jess the dog. We take her everywhere with us, so we do go to the pub a lot. If we're gonna eat out, for example, we'll probably end up at a pub because most restaurants aren't dog friendly and we just don't go out without her. Um, so we do visit a lot of pubs. On that particular day, we actually went to four pubs, but by the fourth pub, we'd kind of given up on the vlogging. My tips for the pub would be this. Um, especially for a whippet, take a bed, because uh, they're all skin and bones. Jess just isn't comfortable sitting on the floor, especially not a hard floor, and she'll just cry. She won't be happy, won't be comfortable. So um, we thought, we've thought we tried taking mats for her or blankets in the past, but it's not enough. Like We take a whole dog bed with us. <laughs> whenever we're going out um yeah the whole caboodle so i would suggest finding a bed that you can travel with and try and squeeze into a bag or something it's not very um elegant but that's what we try and do i would also suggest taking a chew or something if you can so they've got something to do under the table and we found that we sit we won't sit in the middle of the pub we'll sit against a wall and we'll put jess in her bed 
against the wall because if we sit in the middle of the room she's kind of looking all around her wondering like what's going on behind her where people are coming from what's that noise if we sit her in a corner or against a wall then she settles much better she feels much more comfortable and reassured and we'll sit either side of her flank her <laughs> where does Jess sleep at night in her bed or yours um the answer is at the moment, she goes through phases with this, so she always sleeps in our bed, but at the moment she gets into her own bed at the start of the night, gets a couple of hours of completely undisturbed sleep, and then she gets in here at like midnight, 1am, um, and burrows down under the duvet in between us and stays there for the rest of the night. Then she overheats, comes out, sleeps on top of the bed, but she'll stay in our bed until the morning. Which I really love, it's not for everyone, but they're the snuggliest dogs. They're so cuddly, I can't tell you. I really thought that like they were going to be bony and not much fun to cuddle, but I was so wrong. She's the sweetest little snuggle monkey. Also, as a breed, they just love anything comfy, and beds are the ultimate comfort. They love your sofa, they love your bed. We also have a bed for Jess in each room, but like she just likes being near us, so that's how it is. Do you ever get over how cute their toe beans are? No, never. Do they noticeably shed? Yes, like it doesn't bother me, it's not like, it's not tons of shedding. They've got quite short hair, quite short fur, and only one coat. So, you know, it's just, it's not tons. I find it really manageable. You don't sort of see it on the floor or on the carpet or anything, it's only really on our white bed sheets where I notice it. It's not like you give her a hug and it's all over your clothes or anything like that. This person says, does... <laughs> Does Jess make burp noises if you hug her extra tightly? Um, would not recommend <laughs> hugging your whippet extra tightly, but I do know the noise they mean, because um, sometimes if you're giving her a belly rub and you like apply a bit of pressure, <laughs> she kind of makes this groaning noise, like she's, like yeah, you're helping her like release that trap gas. I actually love it, I think it's really sweet. And last question, what made you decide that whippets were the way to go? Um, I did quite a lot of research before I got a whippet, um, we were living in Hackney, so we needed a dog that was going to be comfortable being with us at home um, and comfortable being walked in the park and that wasn't going to need hours worth of exercise every day in open fields because we just couldn't get out of London in that way. So, so yeah, that was kind of perfect really. And she's been super sweet. But whippets aren't dissimilar to other sighthounds, especially greyhounds. So I think if you're getting, if you're thinking about getting a dog and you think like Jess is gorgeous or you think you like whippets, um, definitely consider greyhounds as well because there are so many of them needing homes. They do need a bit of walking but not like loads, most of the time they just want to be on your sofa on their back with their legs in the air so um, yeah definitely worth considering. Anyway Thank you for watching this video. Um, as always, check us out on Instagram at Worried Whip It and me, Human Jess. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like because it means the world to us. Thank you very much.